What's up guys, it's Franklin here. Um, tonight I'm gonna show you guys how you can change your trainer information on Pokemon Sword and Shield using PK Hex. I know some of you guys have very interesting questions on that and I will try to solve them all as much as I can in this video. I am currently moving into a new house that I recently bought. So these videos that I'm pumping out might not be at the same rate that I used to back in the day, as if I was any better. But regardless, that's not the point. I will try to get videos, I will get my own room, my own setup, I'm gonna be so lit when I um, get my, when I start moving in. That way I can just pump out videos without any sound. That could be peace, there will be balance to the universe, racism has ended, and hope has been restored to all humanity. But for those of you who are sitting at home, like you're supposed to because of the current situations in the world, I will show you guys how you can edit your trainer info on Pokemon Sword and Shield. Coolie beans, let's start. So, at the far right, this is assuming, now before I start, this is assuming you know how to use PK Hex, knowing how you can install custom firmware. If you guys don't know how to do that, check it out on YouTube. There are plenty of channels there. I may or may not make a video of this. Nintendo may or may not strike me down if I may or may not make this video so the choice is up to me i probably will make it it might not be the best quality but whatever people want things the easy way so i don't blame them so once you install your file once you set up your file it's in pk hex what you're gonna do guys is you're gonna go all the way to this portion right here with the tabs it says box party battle box which obviously the box is in your party and the save function. So, how to change your um, trainer info? Go to the very bottom and you'll see trainer info as the very fifth option right here. You click on it and voila, you can change anything you want. So, let's start with the very simple stuff. Your name, yes, you can change it. I don't recommend it because your name and IDs are very unique within the Pokemon world. And what I mean by that is that once you make an ID, it gets sent to Nintendo Online saying, hey, this guy's name is this, his trainer info is this. If you want to do um, international competitions online, I'd recommend not doing this. I do not recommend this whatsoever because it might do some funky stuff and it could get you banned too. So very, very careful. Next up, secret IDs. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this, essentially, these are not really important. But these values that you see right now popping up, that's basically how you can get your shiny Pokemon. Because there's specific IDs and values that you need to meet in order for you to encounter a shiny Pokemon. Whether it's breeding or catching them in, in the wild or in raid dens. <clears throat> Although I would argue that the raid den shinies are a bit different and because they fall under a different category. Your trainer ID. Uh, this is, again, along with your name, this is given to you the very moment you play this game. I advise to not change this. If you do, can't say I, I didn't warn you. Next up, apparently you can change whether you are in Sword or Shield. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Just keep it the way it is. If you want to experiment with it, just go offline. Just play the game offline when you make these changes. I don't recommend changing this because obviously you're playing a digital copy or physical copy of the game. This might mess up a lot of things. So be very careful. Next up is the money, the moolah. You can see this little plus button right here. Max money. See the W right here? It was the amount of wins I have in the game. <laughs> Psych! Uh, imagine I won that many games. That's crazy. I'm not, I'm not a maniac like that. Anyways, the W's are the Watts from the wild area. You can max them out. You can get watts pretty simple. You can just go to a raid den that's glowing. You get points. I uh, And then, you know, you can actually use those watts currency to buy TRs and other cool items such as Pokeballs. Um, next up, language. In the very beginning as well. You can change the language of the game. I prefer English because that's the only thing I can basically uh, speak. And Spanish as well. I can I can read, speak, and understand English and Spanish. You want to change it? It's up to you. I prefer English. Adventure info is basically the. This changes how much 
game time you've been playing in game. This does not change the hours on the Nintendo Switch. So if these two are different, a very, very different, maybe there might be an impulse by Nintendo to strike you down with all their might. So be very careful with this as well. I don't recommend changing this. A lot of stuff I don't recommend changing. The money is okay, you can change that. Watts are okay, you can change it. And that's pretty much it. But let's go on to your lead card. Your lead card name. You can change the name, but usually it should be based on your trainer name. Because these two are different, you might have a problem. I recommend not changing that. League uniform ID, I believe you can change this. Why not? I want to be zero. Or I want to be 999. Or I want to be 777. Can I put in letters? CR7. Oh my god. What a monster, Franklin. You are a very creative monster. Uh, you can change this. I don't... I don't recommend letters. Just make it a number, dude. Like, it doesn't really matter. Again, this uniform ID, trainer IDs, I really don't recommend it because, like I said, once you have a set ID and name, it gets sent to Pokemon Sword and Shield online servers, and if they catch any irregularities, you might get banned. So please be very careful. League trainer ID should be the same as your trainer ID. That's pretty obvious. And I think if you ever alter these to the point that it's like uh, very different, don't blame me when you get banned. Roto Rally Score. If you guys don't know, there's actually a, a racing game in the wild area where you try to, you know, it's basically like a, uh, a time trial and you get points based on the, the checkpoints you hit. You can max it out if you're a G. Do that. Do that. And last but not least, stats. Stats basically tell you battle points. You can only get battle points one way, and that is through the battle tower. Or in competitions that you compete online. You can get a very good amount of points by doing the online challenges or online uh, ranked seasons as well. What I mean by the competitions, also the international challenges that happen monthly. You can change to 999 if you need to buy those life orbs, choice bands, uh, specs, scarves, all those cool items that you need for your battle ready team. You can just put it 9999. Now, as for this, your stats. Now, this, this basically tells you how many eggs you catched. Whoa, that's so wrong. How many eggs you hatched? I hatched 148 eggs. How many Pokemon I captured in the wild? I captured 308. Yeah, cool. How many capture symbols do you do you have? 52. Yeah, of course. Uh, what about the Rotom circuit? I only done it twice. That, that's the circuit. Uh, that's basically the Roto rally. I only done it twice, which makes sense. What about fossil restorations? I only done six, believe it or not. What about camping? I've done it twice too, too, because fuck camping. Get rare items, 749. Now how do I get rare items in this game? You do it through the brothers. And you try to chain as much as you can to get uh, pretty much a bunch of cool items, especially bottle caps. So I've done it 749 times, people. Take advantage of that. Total money I've ever owned in this game. Makes sense, because I just changed this. I made a lot of money. And I actually have not changed the, the amount of money in this game as well. Whatever I got is truly what I got. The 3 million that I had here is actually what I got because of uh, rates. You get a pretty much expensive rare fossils or items that you can sell for very expensive stuff. How many times I changed my hair? Only one time because I wanted to look cool. And so that's pretty much it for this tab here. This is just the overview. Uh, like I said, battle points are right here. Very valuable. I recommend not changing your IDs or your names because of legal legality issues. Uh, this tells you how much like you've done of, of something. So how many battles you lost in the game? Zero because I'm like, boss. Tree dot. I have 103. Uh, tree shakes. I've done 19 tree shakes. Not, uh, this basically tells you like, I've done 4,000 bike dashes. <laughs> um, but this basically tells you how many 
occurrences you have done of a certain action. Clothes. I bought 209 pieces of clothes. That makes sense. Um, let's see here. Battle points. How many have I actually gotten in total? This basically tells you the statistics. Next up, we have is miscellaneous. The miscellaneous tab here tells you your battle tower information. I have a 50 game win streak in the battle tower right now and 34 in doubles because at the 34th battle, I faced my champion that I dethroned, which was Leon. And uh, you can change this. If you want to fight Leon again, you can change the values of these numbers. All you got to do is just go to Cerebi or something and look up the number or the value in which you can fight the champion of the battle tower to change it and just change it to the point where, oh, I can face him again. Now, if you want to cheat, you can cheat this too. Like, you, let's say you want, uh, you'll say you're a, you're a, you're a mother effing G and you're like, okay, I got nine, 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 nine. There's no way you can get that in game. And your streak is about nine, 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 you know, but you can't, you cannot do this because it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't, you can't have all these wins and have a streak. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Same thing. Or actually, you can. You can have a streak. You can have a bunch of wins. But how much of a streak you get in those wins are different. You can have 999 as a max streak. Number of battles you can win in a row. And same thing with doubles. You can change this, manipulate this. You can have some fun. Obviously, none of this makes sense. I don't know why they allow this. Allow the game. I don't know why the game allows this to happen, but whatever. Last but not least is the team. Uh, now, this team can tell, this basically shows you what kind of Pokemon you have in your team and you can technically um, change it. And obviously you can change what's shown on your trainer card. Now obviously, there are only two Pokemon on my team so that's why it's only showing two boxes of this now let's break it down for you guys very simply this shows you shown on trainer card and shown on title screen so this basically when you look at your trainer lead card and you flip it with the reverse it will show you the team that you currently have in your party and this box will show you the team that you currently have in your party this shows you the team that you currently have in the title screen so if you play the title screen a bit um, you know, as you open up your game, uh, it showcases you and potentially six other Pokemon in your party. So you can obviously make things a bit different. Uh, now I do not recommend changing this as well because if you want to show your team off in the title screen, you should not mess with this, but I will go through it with you guys as well. So first and foremost, does my Pokemon have an alternate form? No, because the first Pokemon that is in my team is the Eternatus. And I believe the second one is a uh, Caparaja that I caught in a raid. Encryption constants, basically, you know, it's unique within every Pokemon. It's different. Uh, the form argument basically saying, hey, does this thing has a form? No. It's false. Gender. Uh... Obviously, my Eternatus is not a gender, so it's given a value of 2. Is shiny? False, of course. Species, that's the number on the Pokedex. And there are a bunch of unknowns as well. Now, if you go to number 2 here, it will show you the Copperage. Can it potentially be a shiny? Oh, so I got to reverse back here. My Pokemon can never be shiny. That's why I'm saying false. The Copperage I have here is saying that it is, it could be shiny. It has the potential to be shiny, but it's not shiny. Um, there's also species as well and all that, all that stuff. Uh, and this is pretty much, that's pretty much it. This doesn't really make that much sense to me because, um, because it really doesn't matter. Like none of this makes sense to me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I basically don't recommend do not touching this at all. Um, this this one shows on the title screen the Copperage. You can see my species number Eternatus 80, 890 and Copperage is 861. It could be shiny, yeah. 
but it's false because it's not shiny. It has a very own encryption constant, basically it's a unique ID for every Pokemon when you are encoding them in PK Hex. And that's pretty much it. You can basically change what's shown in your trainer card versus the title screen with this tab. Miscellaneous is about battle tower stuff. And the overview, like I said, to summarize, I recommend changing only your money, the Watts currency, your Roto, Ra your Roto Ra Rally score, sorry for butchering that, your battle points, and that's pretty much it. You should not change your name or your ID because it might cause legality issues with the game and you could get banned. But of course, if you may or may not get banned, so but that's up to your discretion. But anyways guys, hope you guys enjoyed this little brief tutorial. Um, I know it, it's a bit short. I know I've not been making a lot of videos, but they will be coming soon. Once I move in, it's gonna be lit, guys. See you guys on the flip side.